Uh, Steve Sarkeesian was asked in the last 24, 48 hours, I believe on the Rich Eisen Show, um, something like, how balance, How do you balance the Quinn Ewers, starter for Texas for two years, going on three, and Arch Manning dynamic? Something like that. And, you know, it's funny, but I'll say understandable. And that is the first, and maybe with a lot of people, the only thing most people think of with Texas, other than the big brand name, is, is Manning, is the Manning name. I mean, that's football royalty. So, of course, around the country, particularly in most places where you're not nerding out on college football, you're not nerding out on the hometown team, it is the biggest name there is. I've said many times, and I'm not saying he's the best player, best recruit ever to play at Texas. He's the most famous recruit ever and arguably the most famous recruit, period. It's football royalty, and that's what people know, and that's what people care about. That's what's that's a big sensational story because it's a big sensational name. So, I'm, I'm not I'm not ripping people who bring up Arch Manning or the Manning name in general. How can you not bring it up, honestly? So, most people hear he's great. It's what you hear. Again, most you know the NFL is. So much bigger than college football. The names of the NFL are so much bigger than college football. The names in college football, most people don't know, but they know that one. They know that one. And people hear that he's great. And then you think, wait a minute, nobody sits a Manning. I mean, that's football royalty. How how, how does the guy sit on the bench? So it's what people want to talk about. And it is understandable. So as usual, and I think he gets it and he should get it, and probably shouldn't be bitter or frustrated with the questions because it's, it's, it's football royalty. It's the biggest name there is. So Steve Sarkeesian was asked. And it's not the last time. In fact, probably every time if he gets in front of a mic or a camera and it's a talk show, it's talking space format, someone's going to bring up Arch Manning. It's what most of you would do. It's the one thing that moves the needle for most of you that are not ultra nerdy football, Texas football nerds. So here goes the conversation. Then I'm going to make sense of this. I don't even like to do it that often, but I'm going to make sense of this because I think the answer is right, although it runs the risk of getting complicated. How do you handle a quarterback depth chart and quarterback room with a kid like Quinn Ewers who came to your program and has shined there and is staying and somebody who is incredibly anticipated in arch manning sitting there waiting a turn how do you handle that steve well i I think i think the first part is is you know we're trying to develop those guys at, at where they're at in the stage of their career and i think quinn's development over his first two years in the program now going into year three uh unequivocally everybody who watches can see that um i think behind the scenes the development arch has had from year one to year two uh has has been tremendous as well and so you know for us the, the, hopefully arch is going to get plenty of playing time that means we're probably playing pretty good and and he's going to get plenty of opportunities to get out there we need to play him we need to get him in games um you know the limited action he got last year he did a nice job um he's a very talented young man he's got great work ethic but i think the biggest thing is he's got a great appreciation for quinn too and and what quinn's gone through to get himself to this point and so they've got it they've got great rapport with one another great support with one another that's not the first time we've had you know multiple nfl type quarterbacks in the same quarterback room so i think we handle it uh, the right way we're up front we're honest we, we push all the guys in there to develop them to be the best they can be with the goal that when your number is called you can go out there and, and play really good football how do- okay you know was the answer coach speak yeah yeah a little bit um now he said it's not the first time we meaning himself because he's been around he's bounced around at big time programs uh at any number of levels as head coach and as a play caller but y- you've never had a manning okay <laughs> there's that's there isn't one. There's not a name bigger than that in football. So that's not entirely true. I do applaud him, again, um, for the way he calmly downplays the significance of football royalty. 
I, I think what's amazing about the entire story, to me, is not that there's a Manning name and you're dying to see it work out. Not that. It's that it's rare that three people, certainly in the world of college football, where you're turned into a mercenary. You just bounce from place to place, and you, tr- you, just try to, you try to latch on. That's what you do. Because when you come in as a high school player, these guys are all told, understand this about high school recruiting, you're told you're the greatest always. You're lied to always. You think, understandably, there's an inflated ego there. Now, that's not even with your name Manning. I'm most amazed at how the three, those three guys handle the most high-profile story in college football, again, and that's because of the name. It's not anybody's fault. I'm really amazed how well this works and how rare that is in any line of work, in particular football, in particular the quarterback position. So credit to Steve Sarkeesian. I know he gave you coach speak, but credit him And then credit those players, those two players, because it seems to work. And I'm going to talk about why it works and what you could probably, in a nerdy way, pay attention to. And then the one way it could get complicated. And I didn't say disastrous. I'm just saying it could get complicated. Because right now it's not complicated. And it's not complicated from a player's perspective or a managerial perspective because the three of them are really in their lane and they don't say much, which is the ideal way to do it. It's not great for my business. I've said many times, the best thing for my business and for you and your interest would be for the three of them to be chunking each other under the bus, but they don't do that. In fact, they do anything but that. It's really admirable. So, why it works, and then the one or two ways it could get complicated. One, understand this. As the head coach, and I know you don't want to believe this. I know that everybody likes to bring their club soccer mentality, parent soccer mom mentality to college football. You can't. Stop with the vision that there's always an agenda. Stop it. There's not. As the head coach, and I don't care how big the program is, as the head coach, period, your team your employees, if you want to just if you want to project this to management, go ahead and project it to management. The same standard applies. But your team, your employees, they everyone else has to see that everything is merit based. You can't have a locker room if those guys are wondering if you have an agenda. They don't exist, everyone. They don't. I know it makes for better drama. And I know you're thinking, Jeff, but there's got to be some bias. It can't, no, and it can't. It can't. All that can matter to the head coach, just like all that can matter to good management is the best player, period. That's it. That's not only what you have to do in the job description as a coach or manager. That is the message that everyone else has to get. That I have to, I have to beat out the next guy if I want to play. The fans in a lot of media really, really want some sort of agenda. I think people in general, just the drama of us is that we always want an agenda. In this case, the agenda would be, oh, he's famous. Oh, he's, you know, his family's rich and his family's influential. So that must mean, no, it doesn't. And it can't. It doesn't matter if you're Jack the Ripper. The best between the lines plays. That's how they operate. That's how he operates. That's how any good coach will operate. Now, can they get it wrong? Yeah. But I don't know in my experience, and I don't know of coaches that have agendas. I'm sorry, soccer parents. It doesn't work that way at the highest level. Because even if you wanted to have an agenda, even if it would be nice and popular to play a Manning just because the name is Manning, you couldn't do that because the rest of your team needs to see the message is only about talent wins. Best man plays, period. So the agenda that you want, the agenda that you're desperate to find, the agenda that says they just want to make money or they just want to sell shirts or they just want to play a popular name, it doesn't exist. If it did, Arch Manning would be playing. And he's going on two years of sitting on the bench and his name is Manning. 
Dads, family, money, fame, recruiting promises, none of it matters and none of it can matter. It can't. His answer, sort of, it was long-winded, but his answer sort of is, this guy's been the best player for us. He keeps the ball, period. That's it. Nothing else matters. Every other player has to think and believe to play I have to be the best. I have to beat out the guy next to me to play. No agendas, no favoritism can ever exist, and it doesn't. It just doesn't. Coaches screw up because they screw up. They don't screw up because they have favorites. Sorry. It's not Little League. Number two, and this is okay, and this is pretty remarkable, and this is a, you know, I think maybe their discipline, the three of them, is in their ability to understand what not to say publicly. We'd love for them to say crazy stuff publicly, but they are an amazing three people who get, in a world where people talk way too much and talk way too much trash, those three get shut up. Just be quiet. I hate it because I want them to talk, but they get it. So all players want to play. And what you don't know is behind the scenes, guys may, guys may be furious. In fact, more times than not, they are furious. They're pissed. Every player's pissed when they don't play. Great players want the ball, whether their man, the name is Manning or not. They just want it. They're pissed when they don't get the ball, and that's a good thing. So how these three play it publicly is pretty, pretty remarkable. It is. Um, This seems to work because Quinn Ewers and Arch Manning, and Steve Sarkeesian too, to his credit, I think because it works with the three of them and they're so aware of how this looks and sounds publicly, I think because they all have been exposed to star power. They've all been stars at some level. You know, they've been around. These three guys have been around. There's a lot of football there, and there's a lot of star power there, and that helps. You know, it really does. And so I think they get it. Ewers grew up playing in a fishbowl in a huge Texas program. He goes to Ohio State. He didn't like it there. He moved. So he's heard all this stuff. He's been through a lot of stuff. And probably learned to just play and shut your face, unfortunately. So he plays, goes to Ohio State, leaves Ohio State quickly, and he gets it, right? He gets, he gets what life is like not to be the guy. You know what? And there's an appreciation there. Hey, man, I've been there, and I didn't get the starting job. I get it. And when you get it, you just keep your mouth shut. So he gets that. He gets a lot of stuff. I really do. The three of them do. They just get it. Um, for Arch Manning, being in football royalty, there's no bigger fishbowl. I mean, <laughs> there's none. None. There's none, none in media, practically. So he has perspective that no other player has. Right? Yep, yours has been it. He's been high profile. He's also been the guy that didn't, didn't get a job. And he took that lesson with him. And he carries it with him to know enough to say, man, it's not going to do any good for me to throw anybody under the bus publicly. So I'll keep my mouth shut and play. Say nice stuff, unfortunately, for the talk show business. But Manning has perspective no other player has. There's no way. He grew up with it. So I'm guessing he has supreme confidence. Guessing. You don't know. I don't know. Um, I'm guessing he has supreme confidence that he has the skills to be a pro. I'm thinking he thinks, I got two years and I'm good enough, and in two years I get to where I want to go, which is the NFL. That's my guess. Because guys will bounce otherwise. You're thinking, I've got to hurry up and play, is what most 17-year-olds who think they're really good. Remember, their whole life is spent with people lying to them lying to them about how good they are. Everyone lies to you about how good you are. He's been in a world where he's seen it, right? He's seen what a big deal some people can be. So he probably thinks he's good enough, and he also knows enough, has perspective enough to know, I'll get my two years. And like most college players, high school stars, he's not in a hurry, and he's not in a hurry because he's been given this amazing perspective. He could have gone one of two ways, an absolute jerk and try to be high profile and want to play all the time right away, or he could do what he does and lay low. And I think that's actually a selling point. The whole set- setup is actually a selling point in the future for Steve Sarkeesian. 
He tells the next high-profile quarterback that he's pitching to, because that's your job when you're a coach. You just sell. You just sell. Now, the ugly part is you're selling to 17-year-olds who are no fun to deal with, who have been told since they were 14 they're the greatest ever. But your job is to sell. So the next high-profile quarterback he's selling to, he says this. Listen, um, these guys trust me so much to get to the NFL, because that's what everybody wants to hear. Yeah, that's all they want to hear. These guys trust me so much to get them to the NFL, to help them to get to the NFL. This guy's even willing to wait a couple years. That's how good the setup is. That's how good I am. I can get you there. So, because the NFL is the recruiting tool. That's what, every, sadly, that's what every 17-year-old thinks about as well. Now, the downside you could say is, um, you know, a player... You know, once to play right away, which they all do, that may not work. But the pitch is pretty good, and that is, hey, look, he's even set around. He's going to be fine. He'll get there. Uh, three, about all three of them, particularly the two players, is they just get media. They get it. Um, too bad for my business. They get it. Uh, they also get talking more, and this is the whole point about getting media, particularly when you're a quarterback and the face of the franchise. They get that talking more publicly is never good. It doesn't work. Unfortunately, it doesn't work in their case. I wish it did. I wish they screamed and talked trash all the time. The fact that Arch Manning is so disciplined to talk very little is remarkable. In a world where people vomit words all the time, when people get over their skis, in particular quarterbacks, um, the guy just gets it. And he gets it, and that is, I just got to be quiet. Just be quiet. I've seen, he's seen what media is. He's seen what big media is. And when you talk too much, it doesn't end well. <laughs> Only a guy who has seen the spotlight, like, a, like an Arch Manning, could fully appreciate what not talking and how important that is. To a degree, yours it seems to be the same. I mean, those guys get it. I hate it. I wish they were crazy. I wish it was just a giant fight all the time for the talk show business. But those guys get it. Um, and then, by the way, how good is yours? See, this is what you're not going to like. Because I know every talk show host is supposed to know everything and tell you absolutely they know which direction they're going to go. You don't know that with college quarterbacks because college football is a completely different game than the NFL. At quarterback, it's light years different. You don't know. You don't know. Yours. Sarkeesian has made this point, and I think he's right. He has gotten better every year. Ewers is a fearless thrower. That's the term I would use. Right? He, at times, that's a problem, and it's been a problem in the past. And you want a guy that's fearless. You don't want a guy that's fearless and dumb. So he's been a fearless thrower, but he's more refined. Um, he's a really good college quarterback. He's really good. He's a, he's a confident thrower. There's not a ton of talent there, but he's played enough football. The game is slow enough. It's a weird term, but the game is slow enough to him that he's a fearless thrower. Um, but here's the thing about the difference between college and the NFL, particularly when it comes to quarterback. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't know how many different ways people try to tell you they can project. It's really tough to do, but it's really difficult when a guy is not super talented. Like you could watch Michael Penix Jr. play against Texas last year, and you watch the ball leave his hand, and you thought, "Oh, that's different. That's different. That ball is <laughs> there's no air. It's just different." But in Ewer's case, you know, he's a thrower and a good one too, and really good college quarterback. The thing is, the difference between college and the NFL for quarterbacks, and this is why you hate the answer, don't know, maybe, could be, might work. That's it. That's the best answer for a college quarterback. You see that in the college, they have these touch passes, right? Particularly touch passes over the middle. Ooh, there's a lot of air under that ball. And you find guys, you know, wide open or look at him loft that ball in there. Here's the thing. In college, more games than not, particularly if you're at a football factory like Texas or Bama you know, or Ohio State, most of the games, your guy can leave their guy behind. Most of the games you play in, your guy running a route is better than the guy covering. It's just a difference. In the NFL, it doesn't exist. You can't put air under a ball in the NFL. 
You can't. You can't float it over the middle because your guy has separated from the other guy. Because in the NFL, there isn't separation. There isn't. I don't care. The worst team, there's not separation. So that's why it's hard to predict. He's a great thrower, is improved dramatically, seems to know the game incredibly well. There's a lot to like. He'll be a first-round pick. Going beyond that and saying, well, that's going to work. He's going to be the next. No. No. He might win the Heisman, though. That's weird, right? But, Jeff, the Heisman, the Heisman doesn't predict anything. Except you're the most celebrated player on the most celebrated team. And it all depends for yours. He plays for Texas. That's a giant brand. That's advantage one. But it all depends on how Texas does. The Heisman Trophy comes down to next year probably three games. Stretch it and say four. And that's Oregon versus Ohio State. That means the quarterback for Oregon, Dylan Gabriel, gets a chance to win the Heisman Trophy. Probably once, one or two games. Then you have Texas v. Georgia. That's Quinn Ewers versus Carson Beck. Um... And that, that game will likely decide as well. If Texas takes care of business and they're undefeated and Georgia's undefeated when they play each other, that game likely gives you the biggest chance to win the Heisman Trophy. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not saying it's right. But that's how celebrated the game is. So how could the Ewers-Manning thing get complicated? You know, it's a disaster. Could it be a disaster? Worst case for Texas is Ewers gets hurt and Manning is not very good or just meh. Which could happen, and you don't know. Don't do that. Don't do that thing where I know I've seen practice. Don't do that. Yours gets hurt, which has happened, and Manning is mad. That's the worst case scenario for Texas. Um, now, what could happen, and where it gets complicated and fun for my business, because you're going to get worked up. You're going to flip out. The crowd goes crazy if Arch Manning runs for two yards. You think it's the greatest play ever. What could happen? Ewers were to get hurt, which has happened the two previous years. Okay, Texas has an easy schedule. Really easy schedule. Their tough games are separated by several easy games. Um, Not many tough games. So let's just say, for example, this is how the whole storyline could get complicated. Um, I have an answer to it, but here's how it could get complicated. Uh, Ewers were to get hurt, say he's out for a couple of games, which again happened a year ago. And he's hurt, and Arch Manning has a couple of really good showings. I mean, lights it up, let's say. Which is not crazy to say, because let's just say, for example, Texas is then playing Louisiana Monroe and Mississippi State. They suck. So, yeah, he could light them up. What, what would happen in that scenario? He steps on the field and lights it up against lame competition. What would you do if you were the head coach? Now, 95% of you, maybe 99% of you, already have the answer. Will you keep going? He's got the hot hand, right, Jeff? You just keep the guy going. That's the way it works. Uh, yeah, sometimes, maybe. But if your measuring stick is Louisiana Monroe and Mississippi State, I, I wouldn't. And I bet you Steve Sarkeesian wouldn't either. Um. So I don't think you would go with a hot hand in that case. I think what would happen is probably what should happen, and that is if viewers, then you put Quinn Ewers to start against Oklahoma because he's put, put a trophy in your case. And two games, you don't lose your job. And two games against Louisiana Monroe and Mississippi State, you don't lose your job, even though the public would go crazy. That's the storyline that gets complicated. I, you know, you, you hope that it doesn't happen. You don't want to see anybody get hurt. You, you want none of that. But that's, that's the one complicated part of the, the relationship. And I think that would be made complicated, to be honest with you, more by fans and media than it would Steve Sarkeesian and those two guys. Because... When your guys played for a couple of years and you've won a championship, you keep giving them the ball until absolutely proven otherwise. You, that's, that's just the smart way to operate, even if the other person's name is Manning. But you go crazy. The pressure from all of you and a lot of media and people dying to see the kid play, the pressure and the noise would be immense.